Hi, this is Pearson and Excel Functional Skills Maths Paper 6 for Level 1 and we're starting on the non-calculator section. Okay. Question 1. Kate uses a machine to make toys. She makes 800 toys in one hour and toys for six hours each day. Kate checks 5% of the toys she makes in a day for any faults. How many toys does Kate check in a day? Right, okay, if we want to know how many she checks in a day, first of all we need to work out how many she makes in a day. Well, she makes 800 in one hour, and she works for six hours a day. So what we're going to want to do, 800 times six. Okay. Well, I've done it as a column, so we can do 6 times 0 is 0, 6 times 0 is 0, 6 times 8, or 6 eights are 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. Put our column in, we've got 4,800. Now, we didn't have to write it as a column. We could have just done the 6 times 8 is 48, and then added the zeros on the end. Okay, either way works. Right, so now we're on to the next bit where it says Kate checks 5% of the toys. So we want 5% of this number. Okay, well, I haven't got a calculator, but what we can do is, well, let's work out what 10% is first of all, because this one's a bit easier. Well, 10%, we just take a zero off the end. So 10% is going to be 480 toys. Well, if we want 5%, 5 is half of 10, so we want half of 480, or 480 divided by 2. Let's just write this up here. So we're doing 480 divided by 2, which we're doing as a bus stop. 2 goes into 4 twice, 2 goes into 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, that's 4 times. And 2 into 0 is 0. So if Kate checks 5% of the toys she makes, well then she's checking 240 toys. Question 2. Write 0 0.3 as a fraction. Okay, well, the 3 is in the tenths column. So that means that's the same as 3 tenths, or 3 over 10. Part B. Work out 1.6 times 1,000. Okay, 1.6. Well, every time we're multiplying by a power of 10, we're making this number bigger, and we're doing that by moving the decimal point. So we've got three zeros, so we're going to move it once, twice, three times, and fill the gaps in with the zeros. So we've got 1,600. And if you can't remember whether you need to move the decimal to the left or to the right, well, move it one way and then check, has my number got bigger? If it hasn't, well, then you've moved it the wrong way. Part C. Right, 19.075, correct to one decimal place. Well, one decimal place. The first decimal place is the zero. So we look at the digit after that, which is the seven. If it's five or more, that means we need to increase this zero by one. So we're going to end up with 19.1. Put that in there. Question 3. Work out 17 minus 3 divided by 2 plus 4 squared. So we want to use our order of operations or bid mass rules. So the first thing we do is anything in brackets, okay? So 17 minus 3, well that's 14. And everything else stays the same, so that's still divided by 2. And it's still plus 4 squared. 
I'm doing one step at a time here. You might want to do a couple of things. You might want to do the squared at the same time, but I'm, I'm going to try and keep it simple. So now we've got rid of the brackets. The next thing in bid mass is I for indices. And that's talking about this squared bit here. Well, four squared is the same as four times four. So four, eight, 12, 16. Okay, so we can keep everything else the same and then put in the 16. So again, you, you might want, not want to do so many steps, but I just think this is showing you uh, how to do it one step at a time. And then if you get more confident, you can do it quicker than that. Okay, right. Now we've done the brackets, we've done the indices. The next thing we've got, well, we've got a division and an addition. The division comes next in mid mass. So 14 divided by two. Well, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So that's seven times. So we've got seven plus 16. Now we've only got one thing left to do. Seven plus 16, which is 23. We can write that in here. And then we're asked to do, use a reverse calculation to show a check of your answer. So reverse calculation means doing it backwards, starting from the end. Well, we had 23 as our answer. The last thing we did was we added on 16. So if we're doing it in reverse, we're going to take away the 16, which gives us 7. Now that's a bit of a check. If we want to continue and go further back, we can say, well, to get the seven, we did 14 divided by two. So if we do the opposite of divide by two, seven times two, that gets us back to 14. So we've done two, two parts there, we've done as a check. Question four, Rupert, is a gardener. He wants to put grass in the space shown in the diagram. Yes, we've got this little diagram here. So we've got one big rectangle, but part of this is the patio. So the grass, we want all of this section and around the corner. Okay. Now the actual question we've got is, work out the area of the space for the grass. Okay, so we don't want the patio section, but we do want all of this. Well. You could work out one big rectangle and then take away the area of the patio. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I don't know how to work out the area of one big shape like that in one go. So I'm going to imagine we've got a line there. And I'm going to treat this as two separate rectangles. So this rectangle, well, the area I know is the length times the width. The length I've got is nine. And the width is 5. And 9 times 5, or 5 lots of 9, 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. Now we want the area of this rectangle here. Well, we know the length is 3. We don't know what the width is. But we do know the full width across is 7. And this section, so... Up to here is 5 metres, so this bit must be 7, take away 5, which gives us 2 metres. So the area here is going to be 3 times 2, which is 6. And actually on both of these we can put in our units, which are metres squared. Okay. So if we want the total area, we're going to have 45 plus 6, or 5 plus 6 is 11, 4 plus 1 is 5. So we get an answer of 51 metres squared. And that's the end of the non-calculator section. Okay, so now we're on to the calculator section. Question one. 
Alan takes part in a health study. He records the time he spends looking at different screens on Monday. The computer, he spends 5.5 hours. Mobile phone, 40 minutes. TV, three and three quarter hours. Alan thinks he spent more than 10 hours in total looking at different screens on Monday. Is Alan correct? Well, we got these all written in slightly different ways, so I'm going to convert them to the same format so then we can add them up and then we can can compare to this 10 hours. Well, 5.5 hours. I'm going to turn everything into hours and minutes. Well, I know 5.5 is the same as 5.5, so I know that means 5 hours and half an hour is 30 minutes. Well, mobile phone, that's just 40 minutes. So we can keep that as it is. Three and three quarters of an hour. Well, we've got three hours. Three quarters, well, if half an hour is 30 minutes, a quarter of an hour is 15 minutes. So if we've got three quarters, we want three lots of 15. So we can use a calculator for this. So three times 15 gives us 45 minutes. Okay, so if we add up the hours, five plus three, we've got eight hours. So what we want to do here is add up the 30 plus the 40 plus the 45. And it's the calculator section, so 30 plus 40 plus 45, and that's 150 minutes. Well, 115 minutes, that's more than an hour. So let's take off an hour from here. So if we take off 60 here, we can add an hour on here. So 8 plus, uh, well, we've taken off 60 and we're adding one on. So 8 plus 1 is 9 hours. And 115, so it's a bit dark here, take away 60, leaves us with... 55 minutes. Well, 9 hours and 55 minutes, that's less than 10 hours. Alan thinks he spent more than 10 hours. Is Alan correct? No, he's not. Question 2. Sarah sees this poster about results of a survey about favourite meals in the school canteen. So we've got here favourite meals of 180 students. So this section represents the number of people that like fish. This are the ones who chose pasta. This small section for lamb. And this big section here are those whose favourite meal was chicken. She decides to write a comment about the results on social media. How many students chose fish as their favourite meal? And this we've got, you must show all your working. Okay, right, so we want to know what this section represents. Well, we need to know how big this section is. Okay, so we're going to need one of these, our protractor. Now, you can, we need to measure this section, but it doesn't matter. We can start from the top and measure this way around, or we can start here and measure this way up. I'm going to start from the top because I think it's easier reading it vertically. So what I'm doing, I'm finding the crosshairs, putting it right in the centre of the the circle. I want to start measuring from this line, so I'd line that up with my zero. Note we've got numbers on the outside and on the inside, but I want to use the numbers that start from zero. So we're measuring around 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way around. Let's just line this up exactly on there. Okay, so 50, 60, all the way around. And here's where my section finishes, which is 120. If you get a bit confused and say, oh, I'm not sure do I want 60 or 120, well, have a look. This section is more than a right angle, so we know it's got to be the number that's bigger than 90. So this is going to be 120 degrees. Right. Now we've got that, we can work out how many people this represents. Well, we've got 120, and I know that in a full circle... We've got 360 degrees. So that's 120 out of 360. 
And we've got 108 in total. So it's 120 out of 360 times 180. You might find it easier to just work with this first of all, or simplify this, or, I mean, this will go straight into your calculator. So actually, let's do that bit first. So 120 divided by 360. Okay, so that's the proportion of the circle that chose fish. Now, there are 180 in total, so we multiply that by 180. It's 59.9999. Now, sometimes with these uh, simple calculators, because of the way they do the calculation, you might get this. So what we just do is we'll just round it up. What is it? 59.99 is going to round up to 60 degrees. Oh, sorry, not 60 degrees. Uh, going to be 60 people, isn't it? 60 students. And we can write that down in there. Now, you might just say, oh, it looks about a third, and you might do a guess, which is fine. But to get the full marks, you'd need to use your protractor and show you can measure this accurately. Okay. Question three. Patrick needs to put fence panels around a field. The field is in the shape of a rectangle. So we've got this rectangle, which is 45 metres across, 40 metres down this side, and we've got the gap here. Patrick will leave a gap of 260 centimetres for a gate. Each fence panel is 1.8 metres long. Patrick can cut and join the fence panels. Work out the total number of fence panels Patrick needs to put around this field. So we're going to have lots of little sections that are each 1.8 metres long. We want to know how many of these we're going to need. Okay, so this is a perimeter question. We can want to know what all of this length is first, and then we can divide it by the length of the fence panels. Right, but we've got this little gap here. So we've got this in centimetres, but everything else is in metres. So let's turn this into metres, and it'll make it a bit simpler for us to compare the numbers. Well, I know that we've got 100 centimetres in a metre. So if we do 260 divided by 100, and you can use your calculator to check if you want, we're going to get 2.6 metres. So when we're working out our perimeter, we're going to say, well, we've got 45 metres across the top, another 45 at the bottom, 40 metres down the left side. Now here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to say, well, we've got 40 metres for all of it, and then we're going to take away 2.6 metres. Okay. You could take the 2.6 off the 40 first, or you can do it this way and do it part of one big calculation. So we've got 45 plus another 45 plus 40 plus another 40, and then, of course... We need to take away the 2.6 metres, which gives us 167.4 metres. Now, each panel is 1.8 metres long. So we want 167.4 divided by 1.8. I've still got this in my calculator, so that's fine. Divide it by 1.8. And we get exactly 93 panels. So. Question four. Varna works in a bookshop. The table shows the number of books she sold in the last four weeks. From week one, she sold 175 books, week two, 120, week three, 215, and week four, 150 books. Varna begins to show this information in a chart. On the grid, so that's down here, complete a suitable chart for Varna. So let's see what they've started so far. Right, so they've started doing the numbering for us. Great. 
So we want to see what's the highest number we're going to have to go up to. And you always want to go at least as high as the biggest number you've got. Well, the biggest number is 215. And they've already started by going up in 25s for us. So we're going to continue going up in the same gap. And we know that 215 is what we need to get up to. So 0, 25. So if you want to add, use your calculator to keep on adding 25 each time. So we can do 25 plus 25. So we're going to get 50. If we do equals again, we'll get 75. If we do equals again, that'll take us up to 100. Then we're going to have 125. 150, 175, 200. We want to get to 215. Well, if we had another 25, we're going to get to 225. So that's fine. It's fine if we go past the number. We just have to go at least as high as it. And so we need to put a, a label here. So this is number of books sold. Down at the bottom, well, what else have we got? Well, we've got the number of weeks. So I'm going to do this in like sort of four sections because we've got four weeks. So we're going to have one, two, three, four weeks. And I should have said, they haven't told us what chart to draw. I'm going to draw a bar chart. Okay. Uh, you could draw a line graph if you wanted, but for something like this where the information from one week to the next, where they're completely separate, I think a bar chart is, is going to look nicer. Right, so the first week sold 175 books. So let's mark 175 here. Now it might not show up that well on here, so I'm going to go either side of the line. And I'd recommend using a pencil in the exam for this in case you need to make any changes. Right, okay, hopefully that's clear enough. Then in week two, we had 120 books. Well, here's 100, here's 125. So we've got five boxes here from 100 to 125. So 25 and five boxes. Well, 25 divided by five is five, so each of these must be worth five. So 105, 110, 115, 120. So... I would recommend doing it with a ruler, but I'm just doing it here so that we can make it look a bit darker. Easier for you to see. That's 120 for week two. Week three, we've got 215. So 200. Remember, we said each of these small squares is worth five. So 205, 210, 215. Okay. And finally, week four, we've got 150. That's nice and straightforward. Okay, so I, you might see I'm doing just all of the tops of the bars at the moment, and then I'm going to fill in the vertical bars. Well, I'm going to go over my axes here. Again, it's black on black, so it's not showing up that well. over these lines should be able to see that now you might want to draw bars that don't touch well, that is absolutely fine if you want to have a gap between them uh, for me that just means you have to draw more lines so I'm going for the lazy option okay so there's our bar graph almost done one thing I haven't put is a title so I can just call it Books Sold. That'll do. Question five. Joe sells cars. He sold 840 cars last year. 720 of these cars were petrol cars. All the other cars he sold were electric cars. Joe writes a report for his manager. He states, I sold six times as many petrol cars as electric cars last year. 
Is this statement correct? Okay, well, let's find out. If he sold 840 in total, 720 were petrol. So that means the electric ones must have been 840 minus 720. So 840 minus 720, that gives 120 electric cars. He said, I sold six times as many petrol cars as electric. Well, six times as many would be six times 120. So if we do six times 120, we get 720, which is the same as this. So is the statement correct? Yes, it is. Question six. Raphael owns a barber shop. The table shows the number of customers who had a haircut last week at the shop. On Monday, 58, Tuesday, 64, and so on. The price of a haircut was eight pounds. that. Next week, Raphael will increase the price of a haircut by 25%. And he will have the same mean daily number of customers. Raphael thinks his mean daily income next week will be more than £750. Is Raphael correct? Right, so what we need to do here is we need to increase the price of the haircut. But also we need to know what the mean daily customers is. So we can work out how much money he took as well. And then we can compare that to the 750. So let's start by increasing this by 25%. Well, 25% of eight pounds is the same as 25 divided by 100 times eight. 25 divided by 100 times eight gives us two pounds. Now that's the 25%, he increased it by 25%, so we need to add on the original eight pounds. Two plus eight makes 10 pounds. Right, so that's the new price of a haircut. Now we need to work out the mean. Well, the mean is the total divided by the frequency, or how many. So we need to add up all of these. And let's see what we get. Again, sorry, it's so dark here, I don't know why. Okay, so 58 plus 64 plus 49 plus 73 plus 89 plus 96 plus 103 gives us 532. Okay, so that's our total. How many have we got? Well, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's seven days of the week. So 532 divided by seven, and we get 76. So that's our mean number of customers. So if we want to know his mean daily income, the income is how much money he makes, well, it's going to be 76 people each paying £10. So you can use your calculator, but I'm sure you all know that we can just add the zero on to make that £760. Now, he thinks it will be more than 750 Well, yes, 760 is more than 750 So is Raphael correct? Yes, he is. Question seven. Here is a cuboid. So we've got, well actually we've got a square as the front of it, and then so eight by eight centimetres here and 17 centimetres going back. Calculate the volume of the cuboid. Remember to give units with your answer. Right, well the volume of a cuboid is the length times the width times the height. 
Now it doesn't matter which you call the length and which you call the height and all the other bits. It's so long as you're multiplying all three different dimensions. So I'm going to say, well, let's make, well, all right, let's make that the length. So we'll say 17 long. The width is eight and the height is another eight. So multiply them all together. 17 times 8 times 8 equals 1,088. Now, they said remember to give units with your answer. Well, this is in centimetres. And because we multiplied, or well, we've got three dimensions here, we're working with volume. So it's centimetres cubed. And that's it. Not too bad for three marks, especially when you've got your calculator you can use. Okay, question eight. Andrew works at a town hall. The town population is 470,015. Andrew uses this rule to work out how many people in the town have a full-time job. So it takes the town population, multiplied by 0 0.6, and you get the number of people with a full-time job. And you think 272,019 people in the town have a full-time job. Is Andrew correct? Show why you think this. Right, well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put... I like commas in my big numbers. So it's easy to see. 272,019. Right, so how many have we got in this town? Well, it's 470,000. And 15. So we want to write that out. So 470,000 was it coming? And 15. Well, we can put the 15 like that, but we need to put this in to show that we've not got no hundreds. So 470,000 and 15. Right, then we're going to need to multiply that by 0 0.6. So if we do that, 47001. 5 times 0.6, and we get 282,009. And you think 272,019 people have a full-time job. Well, that is not equal to 272,019. So is Andrew correct? No, he's not. Question 9. Wesley is planning his new bathroom. He will put a bath and a sink in the bathroom. The bath needs a rectangular space 1.7 metres by 1 metre, to be against the back wall, to be an equal distance from both side walls. Well, let's just have a quick look at and That's the picture we're going to look at. Now we've got information about the sink. The sink needs a square space 0 0.5 metres by 0 0.5 metres to be against a side wall. So that's, that's a back wall, that's a side wall. To be at least one metre from the bath and to be at least one metre from the doorway. Show a space for the bath and a space for the sink on the grid. Remember to use the scale and label each item. So this is where we're going to have to draw it. We've got our side walls up here, back wall, doorway here. And the key says one square on the grid 0 0.25 metres by 0 0.25 metres in the bathroom. So let's go back to here. So we've got a rectangular space. Do a quick sketch of the bath. Now 1.7 metres. Now if you remember the scale said that one square, so one of these was 0.25 metres. So if we want to know how many squares we've got along here, well, we're going to do 1.75 divided by 0 0.25. And we get seven squares. Okay, that's how many, much space it's going to take up on the, on the diagram. And we've got one metre so 1, again divided by 0 0.25 metres, oh, 1 
divided by 0 0.25 or a quarter, and we're going to get four squares. So the bath is going to need a rectangle which is seven squares long, four squares wide. Let's do a similar thing for the sink. This is a square this time, so 0 0.5 meters, so 0 0.5 how many 0 0.25s are we going to fit in there? Well, 0.5 divided by 0.25, we get 2. So it's 2 squares. And because it's 0 0.5 metres this way as well, this weight is also going to be 2 squares. So now we've got to work out where to put them on the grid. So the first one, we've got the size to be against the back wall and to be an equal distance from both side walls. Well, here's the back wall. And if you remember, I'll just draw it here again. The path is seven by four. Okay, well, yeah, they haven't said which way the bath is turned, so we could have it sort of sticking out here, but that feels a bit awkward in a bathroom. So I would have it running down this way instead. So let's see how many we've got. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 squares this way. We've got a length of 7. So where can we fit that 7 so we've got an equal distance? Now, you can try putting it anywhere and then just adjust it up or down to get the distance the same. But I don't know if we've got 11. If we take away 7, that leaves 4. So 11 minus 7 equals 4. And then if we divide that by 2, that gives us 2 squares. So we're going to want 2 squares at this end and 2 squares at this end. So that means we're going to have, and the bath is 4 squares wide. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares long, one, two, three, four squares that way. We've got two squares at that end and two squares at that end. Right, so that fits nicely. Okay, so that fits all of these requirements. Now we need the sink. So we know 0 0.5 meters by 0 0.5 meters, which we said was two squares by two squares, to be against a side wall and at least one metre from the bath, and at least one metre from the doorway. So, side wall, so we don't want it near the door or the bath. Well, why don't we put it over in the corner? And we want it two squares by two squares, so... We'll put it in there. Now, some of you might be saying, ah, oh, but that's against this wall here. Well, it doesn't say it can't be against this wall. It just says it needs to be against the side wall. So that's fine. If you wanted, you could move it along and put it here instead. But you'd want to work out what this gap is. So actually, we should do this, really. Well, we worked out before that one metre on the bath was equal to four squares. So let's just do this for completeness. Let's just show that we know that... One metre is four squares. You don't have to do this, but I just think it's nice to do it so we can make sure we've got one, two, three, four. Yeah, at least four from the doorway and one, two, three, four. Easily four from the bathroom. Question 10. Here are some numbers. Work out the range of these numbers. Right. Well, I know that the range is the biggest or the maximum minus the smallest or the minimum. So what's the biggest? Well, 27.5, 63.1 is bigger. Uh, anything bigger than 63.1? No. So that's our biggest. And what's our smallest number? 
minus 17.3, anything. We've got minus 42.4. No, nothing smaller than that. So it's minus. Now it's minus the minimum. So we've got minus or take away, and then the minimum is minus 42.4. Now, hopefully you remember that when you've got minus and minus right next to each other, that becomes a plus. If that's not obvious, then a good way to do it is to think of a number line. So we've got zero here. We've got 63.1 up here. Minus 42.4 would be down there. So we've got from minus 42.4 to zero, we've got 42.4. And then from zero up to 63.1, we've got 63.1. So the range, that distance, is the same as adding these two together. So we can do that on a calculator, 63.1 plus, what was it, 42.4. And we get 105.5. And they haven't told us what they are, so we haven't got any units. We can just put that in here as it is. But always good to check if there are any units. Okay, show a check of your answer. Uh, well, we kind of have done a check with our number line, really. But what we can do is we can work backwards, so we can do a reverse check. So we start with 105.5. Now we ended up adding the 42.4, so if we take off the 42.4, we should get back to what we started with, and we do, which is a 63.1, so a valid check. Question 11. Charlie is organising a party. She needs to buy 90 party plates. She finds this offer. Pack of six plates. Normal price, £3.55. Now one-fifth off the normal price. Charlie has £45 to spend on the plates. Does Charlie have enough money to buy 90 plates? Show why you think this. Right, so... We've got a reduction in price, but we've also got to work out how many packs we need. You can do it either way around. I'm going to start off by working out how many packs we need. So we've got, she wants 90 plates. Each pack has got six. So we can do 90 divided by six. That gives us 15. So we want 15. Now, we could work out 15 packs at the normal price and then do the reduction, but uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to work out the price of a pack with the reduction and then multiply it. So we've got one-fifth off. Now, what I think a lot of you will do will work out one-fifth of this and then take it off with a £3.55, which is absolutely fine. I'm going to do a shortcut. I'm going to say if it's one-fifth off the price, well then that's going to leave me with four-fifths of the price. So I want four-fifths of 3.55. Okay. If this doesn't feel comfortable, well do it the other way. Work out one-fifth and take it off and you'll see that we get the same answer. So four-fifths, or four divided by five, 0 0.8 times 3.55. And that gives us £2.84. So that's our new price of a pack. Okay. So we've got 15 packs. Each of them is £2.84. If we multiply them together, so we've still got 2.84 on our calculator. Multiply it by 15. We get 42.6. But remember, this is money. So we can't have one decimal point, uh, one decimal place. We need to put the zero in to make it forty-two pounds sixty. Charlie has forty-five to spend on the plates. 
Does Charlie have enough money? Well, £42.60 is less than £45. So, yes, she has enough money. And that's the end of the paper. So I hope you liked it. Please like, add any comments you've got. Subscribe to the channel so you get updates for when I add new videos. And look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.